When I was young, I wanted to be considered brilliant, so I decided that a technical job would prove to someone, somewhere, that I was worthy of something. This was not the right path for me. My life became way out of balance. I had discounted my own artistic self. Along the way, I stubbornly chose to stay with a technical career. The smartest thing I did was to pick up artistic endeavors on the side to try and compensate for this imbalance. I can't remember when I started making jewelry. That particular endeavor has lasted through two marriages, one divorce, different states, dogs, cats, arthritis, glasses, getting older. It remains with me to this day. There are so many aspects to jewelry making. If you like intricate design work, you may want to try loom weaving beads. You can spin out patterns gradually as you pick up tiny seed beads one at a time on the tip of your needle. You can copy the designs from traditional Native American patterns. Weaving allows you to zone out, and it's sort of an artistic meditation. Take silversmithing. It's challenging work with the chemicals. Everything has to be just so, so you can get a beautiful finished product. It's dangerous and exciting to work with a torch on metal, but it's so easy to make a mistake and destroy your own hard work. Stone properties themselves are a worthwhile study. The different temperatures and textures, the colors and structures, their hardness and cleavage, Learning the names and unique qualities takes some time, but it's so intriguing. Moonstones, chrysocolla, malachite, lapis lazuli, the royal blue stone, often found with specks of pyrite, calcite, or gold. Ancient Egyptians used powdered lapis as a cosmetic, and the pharaoh wore the stone as jewelry. It was highly valued and believed to enhance wisdom and psychic powers. Labradorite is named for the Labrador Peninsula in Canada, where it was first found in 1770. It has been discovered in many places since then, including the U.S., and it's valued for its unusual flashes of vivid colors, also called labradorescence. The historical use of stones is another fascinating aspect of this hobby, especially their roles in healing and spirituality. You can find any number of books relating historical meanings to gemstones. Who knows, there may be some truth in them. Shopping can be a hobby in itself. If you are a shopaholic, you'll love it. You see colorful, vibrant hanks of beads, feel the rough edges and smooth silkiness of different stones. The weights vary greatly. Good bead and stone shops are a delight to your visual and tactile senses. Beads come in various styles and sizes and associated costs based on how much they are valued and their rarity. Some beads are faceted. Some aren't even stones, but shells or coral. Stringing beads has become my favorite form of jewelry making. It doesn't hurt that people appreciate my finished product and that I've sold in galleries and specialty shops. I suppose my talent lies in designing them. You may find that you have a knack for creating wearable art using beads. Stringing beads is technically simple and it requires few tools. You need a cutter as well as a crimping tool to finish the piece and perhaps wire looping pliers. The best stringing material has a combination of wire strength and string-like draping qualities. I finish a necklace or bracelet using a cylinder shaped crimp bead. You take the wire and string it through the crimp bead and then the fastener and then back through the crimp bead tucking the wire into the necklace beads. Take your crimping pliers and crimp the cylinder using the heart shaped hole in the pliers dividing the crimp bead into two chambers. Then turn the bead sideways and crimp using the oval hole which tightens the chambers around the wires, holding them fast.
earrings can be made simply as well. Just take a head pin and string some beads onto it. Bend the head pin through the eye of the earring hook and then around the pin itself. Use the looping pliers to make it neater. Designing doesn't always come easy. I sometimes string a necklace 10 or 20 times before I decide it suits me. Even after I finish a piece, I may look at it the next day and decide to take it all apart and start again. A statement piece is a dramatic work of art. For example, if you find a striking vintage pendant and long to surround it with complimentary beadwork and present it well, you will often wind up with a statement piece. People will stare. Conversations will ensue. You may find yourself producing a specialty item. Someone designates meaning to a stone or a bead and asks you to string it. In this example, the blue and red pearls are representative of two children lost tragically. The wearer wanted to be able to touch them with her right hand. Welcome to the multifaceted world of jewelry making. Delight your brain. Dream about vibrant stones. Wake up with new design ideas. It's a breath of fresh air away from technology. Your life will become more fulfilling and you will achieve a real sense of balance. I did.